Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the Social Hour is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is the Social Hour, episode 23. What up, Jordan? Recorded Monday, August 29th, 2011. This episode of the Social Hour is brought to you by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to create a high quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off your new account for six months, go to Squarespace.com and use the offer code Social Hour 8. And by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, your Mac, your iPad, your iPhone, or your TV instantly. All stream directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to Netflix.com slash twit. Hello, everybody. It's time for the social hour. It's episode 23. And from the Twit Brick House in Petaluma, California, I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm Amber MacArthur from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Amber, we and have Sarah- we have like what three weeks of you in one place in a row now. I know. I'm starting know. to get uncomfortable. Well, it's going to come to an end, Sarah, in a oh. few weeks. So uh, <laughs> I'll start traveling a little bit uh, more this fall, uh, particularly in October. I have a ton of speaking events and uh, a few in November as well, and then it will die down a bit. But uh, I've been in one place for a long time. I know it's funny because I'm starting to take on all these new projects, and I realize like maybe I actually need to travel a lot because it just sort of breaks things up. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, I, uh, I I think I have the, a bit of the bug to kind of uh, keep uh, keep on the road now and again. But it has been nice being home in the summer. Obviously, this is the nicest time uh, of the year in Toronto, so I can't complain. Although the past week, you know, Sarah, earthquakes, uh, the big storm, it's been a, a lively week for weather and news, of course. Absolutely. I know. It's well, I guess once you get into winter, you're traveling a lot. You never, yeah, it doesn't really end there. Then you get some no. storms and grounded in many places. Well, I think actually our guest today, are, are, it's, it's almost a good little segue into our conversation with them because when you're traveling a lot, you have the situation where sometimes it's inconvenient to feel like um, you're really putting in all the effort you need to be putting into keeping up with everybody regularly and on a set schedule. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's one of those things where a lot of people like to be able to automate some of their social media messages when they go away. Or um, even if you you know spend a lot of time kind of consuming a ton of content, say you're at the airport and you find all these great links. What I love about uh, what these guys are going to talk about is the ability to be able to kind of stagger those links so that the messages are sent out periodically uh, on services like Twitter so that you don't bombard your audience with too much at the same time. So, so happy to have the folks from uh, Buffer on the show today. Joel and Leo from Buffer are joining us now. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. Hi. So, all right. we Amber and I know what Buffer is because we like it, and that's why we're having you on the show. But for anybody who's like, no idea what it is, uh, your website is bufferapp.com. So I think, what kind of an app is this? What, what, what does Buffer do? Sure. So I think um, the, the simplest description is very similar to what Amber just said. Um, you're reading a ton of great articles late at night or early in the morning and you want to share it um, with your friends and followers. But maybe sharing it at 1 a.m. when you're reading it is not a good, very good thing to do. So what you do is you drop these tweets into your buffer and what will buff, buffer will go ahead and post these tweets for you at optimal times, well spaced out over the day. So you have a consistent stream of great content for your followers. How does it choose those optimal times? You know, what is the sort of, uh, what's happening in uh, the back end that helps pick those perfect times to send out messages? Sure. So um, you have a very general algorithm at the moment, um, which kind of looks at Twitter peak times. So when you look at um, the most activity happening on Twitter, that kind of happens between 8 p.m. and 8 p.m. And we take that time window, which we found, you know, where usage really goes up and um, take... um, for um, default time for when your tweets will go out during these times. So I'm looking at my, I saw, I went, went ahead and signed up for Buffer, and I'm looking at the times that are suggested for me to tweet. So um, my tweets will be sent daily if I don't change anything in the dashboard, which of course I do have control over. 8.52 a.m., 11.58 a.m., 4.59 p.m., and 7.58 p.m. They're, those are very specific times, and I can see it's like, okay, a few minutes before 9 a.m., maybe a couple minutes before a lot of people take lunch, one minute before 5 p.m. where 
if you're in a very traditional nine to five job, it's like my last chance to get people before they start their commute. Is that all taken into consideration? Yeah, exactly. So that that's um, all that we have like put put it, put into account for coming up with these times. It's just really when normal during normal work hours, kind of catching people just like you say at these times to really you know um, get this one last tweet of yours seen by these people. And now one thing I like that you do on your website uh, in the About Us section is you talk about the fact that uh, as a team, you guys really believe in authenticity and you think that even if you automate, you are able to achieve authenticity. And I think it's an interesting conversation. We've had people on the show before who don't really like automation. I'm just curious to hear more about your view on, on is, is, is authenticity possible with automation, do you think? Um, sure, I think absolutely, and it's a great topic that you bring that up. So I think what I like to say is there's a huge difference between optimizing and between automating. Because with Buffer, all your tweets will still still be your own tweets, right? They are all written by yourself. The only thing we help you to do with is to optimize the timing. So I think there are other tools out there which kind of post stuff for you without, you know, with you be becoming just the kind of an RSS reader, um, middle middleman, you know, it just pushes things live immediately. Um, whereas with Buffer, we really um, try to help people to optimize the timing instead of automating. So all you really do is put tweets in your Buffer, which are still written by yourself. Although uh, so you you do have a suggest me a tweet button on the site <laughs> for I guess people who just really have some sort of writer's block and cannot think of anything. There are a lot of inspirational quotes that you have in your rotation. How do you choose these tweets? So, for example, if I wanted Buffer to suggest me a tweet, I just had nothing to say. Uh, it has now suggested, strive for progress, not perfection, hashtag quote. Where'd that come from? Yeah, so we, we kind of, people, when people sign up for Buffer, it's like you say, sometimes people don't necessarily have something to say right away when they sign up for it. So we thought we, we want to help people, you know, with the onboarding process, make using Buffer a lot easier and say, oh, instead of me finding a link I want to tweet out now, let's just give them a few suggestions. So we have about 150 quotes in there and people can just, you know, hit the suggested tweet button as many times until they find something that's really cool and just trying to, to, to help them get started with Buffer. I'm curious also how uh, Buffer kind of fits into uh, a person who's managing the social media account, how it fits into their day, because there are people out there who are using systems like Hootsuite as a dashboard or maybe even Radiant 6 to uh, manage all their social media efforts. So um, is, is Buffer just another thing that you have to keep up with or is it a way that it can integrate nicely into your existing flow? Yeah, absolutely. So for us, it's always been key to help you integrate that with your existing flow. So I personally, I use CoTweet and TweetTech together with Buffer. And Buffer is never, you know, it, it's, it's never going to be your client. It's just your better, more intelligent publisher that you have. And um, the idea, so, so one example is we have a few users who tell us that every morning they spend like just 10 minutes reading through their um, Google Reader um, or reading their tweets. So Buffer has a, a Google Reader integration and the Twitter.com integration. And then, you know, they spend 10 minutes, they find great content and they buffer that stuff. So with, with, within a very short space of time, they kind of can, you know, provide all the content for the followers throughout the day. And then throughout the day, they can check into Hootsuite and see who has replied to them, um, who has, you know, retweeted them and, you know, engage and start, you know, chatting away. And Buffer just frees you up for um, the conversation because all your great content is already being published on Twitter for you. So that's really the idea of how, how to slot it into your workflow. Take 10 minutes in the morning or in the afternoon, um, fill up your buffer with tweets and you're set. You know, you, you'll have great tweets coming all day or, or even more than one day. I actually think this, it's funny, Amber and I have, have anybody who watches the social regularly know that we talk to people who are on who are on both sides of the spectrum. Either you're not being authentic if you're not using your natural, I don't know, free time to engage online socially, to, hey, listen, we all need tools, we're busy, we don't want to bother people by flooding their tweet stream with a bunch of really great ideas we just had. Are there certain kinds of accounts that work better with Buffer? For example, a parody account, just, just throw it out there. Those sorts of things are the kind of things that I chuckle at well, maybe once or twice a day. And yeah. I never really think about the times that I'm seeing them. But if it was 10 tweets in a row or within an hour, 
it might be much less effective. Yeah, so I think that's a, that's a really great point you're making. Um, a lot of people, like you say, they say, oh, you're not really there, you're not in the conversation. But um, I think, first of all, it's like you say, there is, there is accounts of people who, who say, I want to just tweet, you know, once or twice or three times a day, and I really can't spend, like, every these three different times and different diff- during the day when I go onto Twitter and post that stuff. So um, I think for them, it really helps them to kind of um, s- save the time. Um, but one thing I wanted to mention is when you said, is, is it unauthentic to do that? Um, we found actually that a lot of people um, came back to us and said Buffer makes them engage more in the conversation. And the reason being is that if you have to think about tweeting links and engaging, then it's kind of, you know, you, you can only always be doing one of these things, right? You either find a great post that you tweet, if it's in real time, or you find something that you reply or retweet or uh, answer a question to one of your followers, right? And so what we found is if people know they don't have to worry about the great links, they know that Buffer is taking care of that for them because they filled that beforehand, they can really focus on their stream, right? Mm -hmm. And they can just say, okay, I'm just going to look at all the people. I don't have to worry, oh, I need to find a great post now. And then um, it really doesn't distract them from the stream, right, in a way, whenever they want to do that. So we found actually it helps them a great deal to, to engage in the conversation more than less. Uh, last question from me. Uh, I'm just curious, right now Buffer works with Twitter, but clearly there are other social media sites uh, where people uh, need help updating and managing their stream. So are there any plans in the future to integrate with Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Google Plus? Yeah, so we, we have plans. So right now we're working on Buffer for Facebook. And if you go to bufferapp.com slash Facebook, you can actually uh, sign up there to get access for the beta. Um, we're looking at networks um, such as Google Plus as well, which we've noticed people like to post very frequently on Google Plus. So we're really interested in helping people out on, on there as well. And uh, LinkedIn is, is very interesting as well. We're noticing that um, although it might not, seem obvious to begin with. Um, if you look on uh, Mashable, for example, we're seeing that posts really are shared on LinkedIn a lot as well. So uh, the kind of content that people find Buffer useful to share with uh, is, is being shared a lot on LinkedIn. So you can see that people find Buffer very useful for LinkedIn as well. So um, yeah, Twitter is just the beginning for us and we really want to help people on all the, the social networks. Yeah, it's definitely, it's a, it's a really good case study because obviously it's not the it's not the only network that people can uh, post status updates to. It's just maybe the one that, that people think of first. It, it's worth mentioning on your goodies page, you do make it very easy for people to use Buffer. I mean, there's obviously a variety of extensions for various browsers, uh, Buffer for Android, a mobile version. What about your, your pricing plans? Because Buffer can be free. Um, I never have to pay a dime, but you do give people extra functionality if they end up um, paying uh, per month. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so we, we aim for a really good free plan. So and it, some people can just stay on the free plan forever, and that's really cool. We, we're really happy with that. Um, if you want a few extra things, such as uh, using multiple Twitter accounts, uh, most multiple social network accounts, um, if you want to uh, post on you know more frequently or you want to... Uh, queue up multiple updates so that uh, you'll be posting for multiple days, then you can pay uh, either $10 a month or $30 a month, those extras. And also, if, you, if you're a business um, or you're, you're an organization and you have multiple people and you want to have, say, three or four people adding into the same buffer um, to keep those uh, updates going out, you, you can pay for that as well. Do you, do you find that of the paid pricing plans, besides the free plan, between pro and premium, pro being the ten dollars uh, per month and premium being thirty, what do people generally go to? I mean, if it's a team, you'd think that maybe the thirty would make more sense to them, or is it pretty even? Uh, so we're finding that about ninety percent of people paying for buffer are on the pro plan, and um, we've got about ten percent on on the premium. So. I think, I mean, it, I think it's a natural kind of progression to go from the free, which, um, you know, the highest percentage of people on the free, and then naturally, you know, find the value in Buffer. So we're finding that people will upgrade, you know, sometimes immediately, but also they might use Buffer for two months, three months, and then upgrade once they're, you know, finding the real value. So we just want to help people find that value, and that's why we're aiming for a really good free time. <laughs> 
For anybody who's uh, interested a little bit more, you know, what premium will offer you, I like your guys' description. Enjoy the full power of professional Guy Kawasaki-like tweeting. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, guys, and uh, good luck with everything. I know you're starting to generate quite the buzz in social media communities, so keep it up and we'll be watching. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot for having us. And uh, if anyone from the show has any questions for us, you can always uh, email us at uh, hello at buffrep.com. We're happy to answer any questions. And we're on Twitter as well. I just ask Buffer so. Perfect. Thanks cool. so much, guys. Have a great Thank rest you. of your have week. Have a good day. You too. Bye. 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 Joel and Leo from bufferapp.com. We'll have, uh, we, they're, um, they're very prolific online. So we'll have their personal Twitter accounts and, and all of those links that we talked about in our show notes, of course. Um, there's Leo's Twitter account right there. Uh, that's, I, I, Amber, it's funny. I really like the idea of Buffer um, because have you ever, I, I know this is a really embarrassing thing to admit, but had a great idea for a tweet, but for whatever reason, it was inconvenient for you to tweet at that time or for some reason you wanted to save it and you like actually wrote it down in a Word document or something to tweet at a later time? Yeah, I mean, definitely. And I think also late at night, I tend to do a lot of my web surfing really late at night and right. I don't want to send out a ton of tweets because I feel like, oh, this is really good, but there's not necessarily a bunch of people online and then the next day I just forget about it. So I think that's what makes Buffer kind of interesting is that when you have those moments, like today when I was researching links for the show, it just felt like there was a ton of stuff out there happening and it's not always like that. There's a ton of stuff that I wanted to tweet, but if with something like Buffer, I could space it out so I didn't drive my followers crazy. Exactly. Well, Buffer App, very cool. Um, we thank them so much for joining us. Uh, where, where are they from, Amber? Do you know? I was going to ask that. I know. I was wondering where they're from. Um, maybe uh, they can, if they're still watching, they can drop me an email during the show and I can try to uh, give you an update because yeah. I, I was curious where they're from as well. Yeah. And uh, great. it seems like a great team. Sarah, I have to tell you something really funny before we go on in the show. I was just reading some of the comments on Google Plus from your post. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Scott Gant says that the social hour should be at night with a couple of martinis and soft low light and some light jazz and soul playing in the background. Think Venus flytraps shift at WKRP. <laughs> so I actually feel, okay, so anyone who works with me knows that I'm always saying, you know, the show, it's kind of dark and evening-like because it's Monday morning for me and you know, it's the sun's still coming up outside and it's just, it kind of screws with me a little bit. So Scott, hopefully... Our lighting at least feels a little prime time to you. But yes, I have had other people say that, Amber, that the social hour reminds them of cocktail hour. <laughs> and I guess that could be, it's a little early for me. I mean, you're, it's past noon where you are, so you should feel comfortable having your <laughs> glass of sherry or whatever if you wanted to. But I'm going to stick with my kombucha. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I it being 11.22 a.m. and all. You know, we're, we're still young in the history of the show, so we might as well, uh, you know, keep it uh, PG for now and, and uh, no alcohol involved. Exactly. <laughs> who Spe knows where things could go. <laughs> right. Speaking of um, uh, the, when we shoot the show, if, you, if you're watching this uh, in, in our podcast, in, in, in our archived video or audio feed form, you might not know that you can join us live as well. Um, it's, a fun, it's a fun way to watch the show because you can chat live. We've got our chat room running. Um, we can pull stuff from Google Plus that's coming in in real time. So you can actually be part of the show a little bit more. We record uh, every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern. That's, where, that's Amber's time zone. And 11 a.m. Pacific where I am. And if there's anything that we ever talk about on the show that you want to go back to or, ooh, you missed a link, that sort of thing. Don't worry because we post everything at twit.tv slash TSH. That's our, our show webpage. And by the way, we launched our new twit.tv website. I uh, don't know if you've been there and had a chance to poke around, but it is new and it is improved and we'd love to hear your feedback on what's working for you, you know, what, what, what things that you like and don't like because... We're always listening, um, and that's uh, that how that's how it works with new websites. See, we've got a nice embedded video from our video last or from our show last week. Um, it's good stuff. Yeah, look, there I am. Anyway, that's our website. Uh, you can find everything there. So if you get stuck, definitely check twit.tv slash tsh. And of course, you can email us at the social hour at twit.tv. All right, Amber. Before we move on, we should thank Squarespace. They are our first sponsor on the show. And they are great. We love Squarespace because it's the fastest and the easiest way to create 
a really high quality, beautiful looking website or blog. It could definitely, I, I use it as a blog. Um, not that, not that regularly actually, because I just haven't been very prolific with my personal long format thousand word posts yet. But that's okay because Squarespace makes it really easy to import other content that you are that you actually are contributing to regularly. For example, I have a nice Twitter widget. Looks really nice. If you go to sarahlane.com, you see that and it's updated regularly, even though I haven't had time to write a blog post in a while. That's just one of the widgets that you can add to a Squarespace blog or website. You can create with many of the templates that they have, you know, a beautiful photo gallery. Maybe you're a photographer and you want to show off uh, what you've been working on lately, or or you're selling jewelry. Um, the templates really stretch far and wide, and it gives you a really good example of the kind of website you can create with Squarespace. That's why when we when you think of blog, you think, eh, I'm not really a blogger. There's a lot more that Squarespace can do, and it still gives you all this back-end functionality that's really nice. Great analytics. You know where people are coming from, who referred, to, uh, referred uh, you over, or them over to you. Why did you get that spike yesterday? You have a lot of that information that helps you know what people are interested in um, when they're visiting your site, what they want to see more of. Um, the iPad app is something that I use really regularly. It helps me manage my comments, uh, post on the fly. They've got really good, um, really good mobile interface. They also have really good customer, customer support, and I think that's extremely important for anybody who's going to try out a new service for the first time. You want to know that there are people behind the scenes that are paying attention. They care about you. They're going to help you when you might get stuck or have a certain question about how something works. Squareface is great. Good team. If you want a free trial, sign up for a free account. You don't even need a credit card. It's easy, easy, easy. You can start building your website and you can just try it out. Just try out Squarespace and see if it is the site for you. By the way, there are really good importing and exporting options. So if you already have a WordPress blog or something like that and you think, I've invested so much time, I don't know if I want to start over fresh, you can actually import everything over. And it's as if you started at Squarespace from the very beginning. And they'll also let you export information as well. So they don't hold stuff hostage, which makes you feel warm and fuzzy knowing that they're not going to they're not going to screw you if it comes to that. All right, so you try it out for two weeks and you say, I love Squarespace, I'm into it. Now what do you do? If you use the offer code SOCIALHOUR8, you get 10% off the first six months of your account. 10% off for six months, pretty good deal. SOCIALHOUR8, all one word, S-O-C-I-L-H-O-U-R, eight. Number eight just refers to the fact that it's August, which is the eighth month of the year. That's how Squarespace tracks, make sure that they know who um, was convinced by this, my, my little monologue here, uh, to uh, sign up for a Squarespace account. So we thank them again so much for sponsoring this episode of The Social Hour. Love Squarespace. Again, squarespace.com. Offer code Social Hour 8. So Amber, what are some of the stories from around this social web of ours this week? Oh, Sarah, I don't know. You know, this morning I was looking around and like I mentioned before, I, f I feel like there were so many stories. And don't get me wrong, there's always stuff happening in social media, but there aren't always great uh, news headlines. Uh, but uh, I couldn't get enough of the web this morning and uh, stumbled across this headline, which I thought would be a good place to start. Uh, I noticed it was posted on Read Write Web and it's from um, Pew Internet, who does a lot of research uh, about yes. what's happening on the web and some of the trends. And uh, the gist of the study that was just released is that half of U.S. adults are currently using social networking sites. And this is the first time ever that we've actually surpassed 50% um, of the population. So pretty significant, you know, people still wondering if they should be involved in social media. I think they can read this and uh, uh, confirm with a big fat yes. Absolutely. Um, in also in this research, they break it down a little bit further that in Americans under 30 years old, 61% use sites like Facebook on a daily basis. So that's even higher. In fact, I would almost think it would be higher. Now, I wonder if, are the, is this research referred to 50% of all Americans who have internet access at all? Because I that, would. that's a little bit more, that's a little bit different than saying just 50% of all American adults, period, are using yeah. social networking sites. Uh, the reports that I've seen that are similar to this, usually it is uh, online adults. So if we right. look at even the graph within the page that's embedded, it does say social networking site usage by online adults. So yeah. um, I think you're bang on there. It is uh, people who currently have internet access. So if half of those people are accessing social sites, um, it's fairly significant. And, and clearly from this report, it's not just uh, kids under 30. Obviously, they're, you know, an older demographic has been uh, latching on to some of these social services 
uses, particularly um, Facebook, like my mom. Yeah, like my mom as well. Um, my mom got two little kitties recently, and she has never been more active on Facebook, <laughs> posting pictures of the cats. They're sleeping, they're eating. Look, they're so cute. I mean, but it's, but yeah, I think that um, it, on one hand, you go, wow, 50% of people who have internet access choose to use social networking in one form or another or multiple forms. But on the other hand, it is really just part of our culture. Uh, for, for many people, uh, you'd feel a real void if for some reason you were not able to share on Facebook anymore or a enter a social networking site here type of thing. It's, yeah, it's I just part I totally of life agree. for so many of us. It really is. And that's kind of a great lead into the next news headline, Sarah, with the earthquake last week in Virginia. Uh, I, I know when that earthquake hit and there were reports in Toronto that uh, it had made it all the way here, um, although at a lesser degree, the first thing I, I did was go to Twitter just to see what people were saying and what they were posting. And I think that's kind of a natural reaction for a lot of people is to go to these social sites and uh, get news headlines, whether it's a Hurricane Irene or an earthquake. Um, we just kind of, you know, clamor for other people experiencing it just to share through that experience experience. Do we want to play this video from uh, a Mashable article that shows how Twitter is faster than a speeding earthquake? Yeah, so maybe um, if you want to just like walk through it and just sort of explain because there's not a lot of audio for our audio listeners. Got it. Um, that would be great. All right, so it took 30 seconds from August 23rd earthquake to travel from Washington DC to New York. Just enough time to tweet. This is this is the text on the video page. Now uh, this is in New York City. And a man sitting there reading his book. And uh, he's got his mobile phone next to him, minding his own business. Oop, phone, some, something's happening on the phone. He wants to figure out, I don't know, he's, he's checked his phone. He's, he's, oh no, there's an earthquake. Oh my gosh, there's an earthquake. Things are hitting him. He's still reading his book. And he is unfazed. Why? Because Twitter told him there was gonna be an earthquake moments before the earthquake actually hit. <laughs> where he was sitting in his office. It's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. I thought it was interesting that Twitter had created the video as far as I can tell from the article, that's what happened. Because you don't see a lot coming out from them in terms of you know promotion. And clearly they don't need to promote uh, using the service because it is so popular. So it was a fun little uh, video. And you can imagine there were people who possibly you know heard about the earthquake right away. And um, I don't know if they felt it you know seconds later, but uh, I think it really shows the power of Twitter and, and how quickly information can travel. Absolutely. It's funny that earthquake that happened on the East Coast last week, um, there was, it seems like natural disasters just bring up the comedians online because of course <laughs> everyone on the West Coast is like, oh boy, your first earthquake. Boy, you guys are a bunch of sissies. We, you know, go through this every day, which really isn't true. California people like to pretend like we're just living through earthquake after earthquake. It's not that common here either, but... That night, we actually had an earthquake of our own. Um, it wasn't a big one, but it was definitely, you know, it shook the house a little bit. And so all of us sort of went, see, that that's our penance for making fun of other people who <laughs> went through an earthquake is that then Mother Nature says, okay, well, let's remind uh, you that you, uh, you know, could also have the big one. So that was kind of a, it was a fun little opportunity for all of us to get online and be like, oh, they got us back. We got our own earthquake. <laughs> Payback uh, time, Sarah. Uh, right. Of course, earthquakes are, I mean, you can't really, pr there are earthquake monitoring systems, obviously, but we as humans, most of the time, they're out of the blue. Although uh, Hurricane Irene um, was a great example of using social media in order to get the word out or to help other people get the word out, um, that something possibly catastrophic was coming and you really need to get out of your house, you know, and evacuations. And, and it seems like even though people in New York City didn't have it as bad as they potentially could have had it, there were other cities, certainly in the Carolinas and upstate New York, that were really wiped out by this. And it was extremely important to make sure everybody was on the same page and, and knew where their evacuation center was and what would be open and what wouldn't. So... In those cases, extremely helpful. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Sarah, for our social tip this week, uh, I came across uh, this service, which I didn't know anything about, and this really awesome tip that I read about on Forbes.com. And it's really helpful for anyone out there who is looking for work. Um, now, there is a site out there called simplyhired.com. Have you heard of it before, Sarah? No, I'm looking at it for the first time, actually. So it, it's a nice, simple website here, simplyhired.com. So I've got 
keywords and locations. So I guess if I was to say media and um, let's do a zip code that's in San Francisco and then search jobs, it would give me an idea of everything that has, that is related to media, which of course is a very broad term, but just a start of, of jobs in my area. Is that right? Yeah, so that's kind of the first phase. And where the social tip comes into play is you have the ability on simplyhired.com to go in and link it up with your LinkedIn and Facebook profiles to find out who you know at hiring companies. Uh, so for example, I did, I linked up with my uh, LinkedIn account. I looked for jobs in Toronto marketing jobs. And then as the jobs are listed on the page, after I've signed in with my LinkedIn account, on the right-hand side of the job postings, I see individuals who are already in my social network networks. Um, maybe they work at these companies or they know people who work at these companies. So it's a really cool way to get that personal contact at an organization when you're looking for work. So for example, uh, there's a job here post posted at HP. Well, it looks like I know someone in my network who works at HP and I don't even recognize this person's name, but clearly they're in my network on LinkedIn and it would be an easy thing to reach out and uh, talk to them. So a really great way to have kind of social media integration into a job search board um, to really help you leverage the network you already have in place that you may not realize uh, would be great for connecting to an, a potential employer. I agree. I love this. One of the things that I have an issue with when I'm on LinkedIn is that I'm linked to all these people, but then I have to go to their profile and make sure that I'm up to date on where they're working. And there's a lot of work that goes into figuring out who to talk to if you're interested in a certain position, unless they post it directly. But here it was simply hired. I can see, let's say I was really interested in this online media account manager job over at brand.net. They're down in San Mateo. Ron Richards, host of All About Android, knows Courtney Banaschek, who works over in accounting, or she's account manager at brand. So there I go. Then, you know, there's my in. If you, and, and everyone, it can be very difficult sometimes to figure out who's the best person to talk to when you're really interested in a job, but you don't know anybody working there and sometimes cold calling the HR department doesn't get you anywhere and it can be very frustrating and people are looking for work right now more than ever. So I love this idea. It's like, it's like LinkedIn backwards, but it makes a lot of sense. It's awesome. I know. I, I, I regret not hearing about it until now, but hopefully it's useful to people out there who are listening and watching. Definitely. Um, just a really quick way to do a job search and have that social connection. So our spotlight this week comes from uh, the old founder of Delicious, Joshua Schachter. It's called Jig, J-I-G dot com. I'm still trying to get the hang of this. It got, Jig got a lot of um, uh, buzz. I, I hate using buzz now because it reminds me of making jokes about Google Buzz. But I did see a lot of people tweeting about Jig this morning, um, although I did hear about it for the first time last week. What is Jig? So uh, I just heard about it over the past couple of days uh, as well. And it looks like a place where you can go and you can get help for some type of need that you have. For example, you just figure out, uh, complete your profile on Jig, like I need uh, a social media tip, which is the post that I put there this morning. Mm -hmm. And then people can actually help you out and leave comments to give you ideas uh, for things that you may need. Or maybe you need a plumber, or maybe you need someone with marketing expertise. So it's kind of like a Twitter-like experience, except it all revolves around you searching for some type of need. Um, I did get a reply to the post that I posted this morning from a woman named Melody. Uh, so I thought that was kind of interesting, but I still can't quite figure out why I would use this over, say, Twitter, because I can do the same thing on Twitter with obviously a much bigger network. It seems like this, um, it could be a more, there's more infrastructure in place to ask a question or state a need and get a response. Where Twitter is just much more free form. It's like, whatever you want to say or share or ask in 140 characters, it's a bit of a free for all. This would be, for example, Marco Pergola here on, on my jig, um, unmet needs area. So there's recent needs that people have posted and then needs that still uh, are, are waiting for a response from people. PHP hosting for an e-commerce app. So. He wants something that's, you know, he, it's, it's labor. Um, but then down a couple um, posts down below that, an apartment in San Francisco uh, coming from France. Uh, <laughs> good luck to you. <laughs> I'm also looking for an apartment in San Francisco right now. And it's really hard. But it's, so it's like some of it is more tangible. Some of it's ideas. I have a question. Some of it's, you know, I'm, I'm looking for actual um, 
labor, PHP work type of a thing. So it seems like it, it's, if you had a specific need, this might be a place to go. And it kind of reminds me of Quora, but the Quora is all yeah. about questions and answers, you know, a knowledge base. And this is sometimes about, I'm looking to um, buy a product for managing my closet. Who knows of something I could buy at uh, a closet store type. I mean, I don't know the answer, so maybe I would get something out of whoever responded to this as well. Yeah, I mean, I just play with it for a few minutes. The only the only criticism that I have is I found the whole overall experience. I want to say it's clunky, but I didn't find it as fluid and, and um, as well designed as I would have expected. It, I mean, it has kind of no frills, but there's certain things like simple things I couldn't even figure out to do, like change my profile picture. Should be an obvious way to do that, even when I go into edit profile, but mm -hmm. it wasn't there right away. So um, I feel like it needs a little bit of work, uh, but. Um, Hey, if people are getting help from the site, that's a that's a good thing. You know, it's funny. Melody, um, who answered you, is a friend of mine. Really, Melody McCloskey? Yes, she's the founder of Style Seat, which is it's kind of a I don't know if you want to call it a social network, but it, well, it is a social network, but it's um a place for um, uh, beauty uh, wellness providers to to hook up with the clients. Like if I wanted to. Um, figure out where is the next best place to get a haircut type of a thing. I can go and search um, wellness professionals on style seats. So oh, anyway, I'm, I'm giving her a plug right now. Just It's just funny that she was the person that responded to. Yeah, just hung out with her. Yeah, but, but speaking of haircuts, somebody else that I know who's using Jig, Ted says, hey, I've been cutting my hair since high school to save money. I'm a 30-year-old balding male. Suggestions. I'm not good at cutting my own hair. I need a suggestion. And somebody named Chris said... Yeah, FC, FCS, FSC Barber at Sycamore on 18th. Uh, so there you go. So maybe that's all he needed. And that was just a better place to post than Twitter for whatever reason. Maybe he and Chris aren't friends on Twitter. So he would have never <laughs> seen knows? Chris's response otherwise. Yeah, I mean, I think it's one of those services that really needs a, a large group of people using it to be beneficial to um, a, a wide range of individuals. Because it just, uh, you know, right now I got one answer, but if I went on Twitter and asked the same question, I know I would get, you know, more answers there or Google Plus or Facebook. So um, it just needs to have that mass adoption. But obviously, you know, Joshua had huge success with Delicious. So, um, you know, I'm sure he has uh, some things up his sleeve and, and uh, this will be around for a bit. Absolutely. And it's funny too, because we, I find us, we're always comparing some of the new services to services we use, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus more and more where it's like, well, but why wouldn't I just take this to Twitter? And it's tough. It's tough to start something that's maybe a little bit more niche or thinking about things a little bit differently because you'll always have people like us saying, so what's my motivation to really use Jig regularly when I'll get more engagement on Twitter? But that, you know, we, we get a lot of engagement on Twitter because we've put a lot of effort into building our community there. So it doesn't necessarily mean that there's not room for something else, but it does give them um, a lot to think about. You know, what's the best way to compete with something like Twitter? Yeah, definitely. Uh, now, Sarah, we have a, a good um, email here from Michael from Houston, Texas, uh, who says he'll be launching his real estate career in a couple of months, and he has a couple of questions. And uh, the questions include, does social media have a place in all industries, or is it just for major brands? What blogging sites are most mobile friendly? And uh, finally, my Twitter name is my full name spelled backwards. And Sarah, I can't even pronounce it. It's like Battle Lincoln. Right. Well, it's Michael Tabbert, right. which is his first and last name spelled backwards. So not all that intuitive. It's, it's a hard one to swallow. So um, maybe I could start with the Twitter name and we can go backwards <laughs> um, yes, with the answer sure. question. So um, first of all, with the Twitter name, I mean, ideally your Twitter username is a name that you're going to use across other social sites. And the reality is if you have something that's really difficult to spell, I think a lot of times people are going to get it incorrect. Uh, if you are in the real estate industry, which this, it looks like you are, it might be a good idea to tie your brand to the real estate industry if you plan to be in that industry for a while. Um, you know, even if it's like Michael Holmes, or something like that uh, so that people can identify you with the particular type of work you're doing. But I think your Twitter name or your full name spelled backwards is really difficult for a lot of people to uh, uh, remember and latch on to. And it just doesn't feel that strong as a brand. So uh, maybe rethink that one if it's not too much of a pain. I agree with you. Michael Tabbert is not hard to remember, but I'd really have to think about how to spell that backwards. 
in order to jump over to your Twitter page. So you just don't want to give people any reason to screw up and then see something shiny and stop interacting with you uh, because they will. Um, all right, so what were, uh, his other questions. Does social media have a place in all industries or is it just best for major brands? And then he used Starbucks, Comcast Cares, and Spotify as examples. I think it has a place in all industries and I think that major brands actually have the hardest time um, being authentic on social networks, not because they don't have people there that want to be authentic working behind the scenes. I know that many, especially bigger brands who have a lot of money for social media experts and the like, do put a lot of time and effort into that and they take it seriously. But they also have to convince all of us even more so that it's not just for show. Um, I know for me, when I see, uh, you know, the Comcast Cares is, has proven itself a, a little bit bit of a different situation um, but so many brands I mean a Pepsi I, I don't know what Pepsi's Twitter account is off the top of my head but I'm sure they have one and it's like do I really think that Pepsi means what they say when they are trying to send me to a variety of links or this or that well you know they're 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 a big for-profit company so I'm more inclined to be like hmm they've got to do something really cool and special for me to pay attention to them which is why the old spice campaign worked so well because they really thought outside the box and and people were excited about um, the interactivity of of that campaign with all the videos back last uh, year so so yeah Michael I don't think um, as a as a independent a uh, guy in real estate, you know, starting up his career, you have anything to lose by going full force online. I think it can be really fun for you and definitely help spread the word for any clients and potential clients you might have. And then finally, Amber, uh, what do you think are the blogging sites that are the most mobile friendly? I guess Michael's probably considering that he's going to be on the go a lot and he's mm. going to want to be checking in comments and maybe posting on the fly. We obviously talked about Squarespace. They're our sponsor. They have a really good mobile application and that's who I use. But uh, do you have any other suggestions for him? Yeah, I mean, I hate to recommend Squarespace because I know they are our sponsor, but the reality is I think they're one of the leaders out there and they do have that mobile compatibility. So I would have to say them if you want to be able to access your service on the go, which as a, someone who works in real estate, you're, I know I have friends in real estate and you know, they're always driving around at meetings in their car. So you really need something that is mobile friendly, uh, something that you can view and update uh, while you are traveling around. So I think Squarespace would be a pretty good bet. Um, also, just to follow up on Sarah's answer to your first question, there are lots of realtors and people in the real estate industry using social media and great examples about how they've built really strong communities and grown revenue at their company. So the real estate industry is just hopping uh, with social media stars out there. So find a few of them on Twitter, um, follow them, see what they're doing. You can use a service like wefollow.com to find people in real estate and uh, learn from what they've been doing. And uh, I think you'll be well on your way. Cool. Good advice, Amber. Um, yeah, real estate, it's, it's like a perfect, it's the perfect it's marriage. Perfect. It's, a, it's a good industry to be in social media. We also got an email from um, uh, someone who works in PR who was actually suggesting, we get, we get a lot of emails from people saying, you should have so-and-so on your show. And whether or not we end up doing that, we do get a lot of really good ideas just for companies that might not be on our radar um, already. And one of these emails that I got from someone in PR was for a service called City Pockets. I had never heard of it before. And before I get into it, Amber, are you aware of City Pockets? Because it is no, pretty cool. No, I've never heard of them. Yeah, I have never heard of them. City Pockets is awesome. So what I did was I went ahead and just launched the website. And it either, can I don't know if it was figuring out my location or just happens to default to the San Francisco area. But as you can see, it's in a variety of places. And the whole idea behind this is that it's almost piggybacking off of the very uh, popular daily coupon deal sites, Groupon, Living Social, um, Daily Candy, and so on and so forth. You can see that they have many, many services that they integrate with. So what you do, for example, if you go to Groupon, I would go ahead and add my Groupon account, you know, so it's, it's my email already propagates. That may or may not be the Groupon email account I use. I think it is. And then I go ahead and add the password to my Groupon account and save. And then anything, you know, my activity with Groupon will start propagating in City Pockets. But what, where City Pockets is cool is that it almost, it adds sort of like a, 
it's like a calendar slash wallet to all of these uh, coupons that you might be accumulating. It'll set reminders for, you know, you only have four days left to redeem this coupon that you bought. Remember, it was such a great deal to get 50% off framing at that store down the street and you haven't thought about it since or that spa that you wanted to get a discount on. But it also allows a marketplace feature. So if I go into the marketplace, I can see... Um, for like, uh, what was the one that I looked at earlier? Oh, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to find it again. But there was, you know, there's an offer where sometimes on Groupon or Living Social, for example, you only have a certain amount of days to buy the coupon and then it's over. So if you miss it, you miss it. Well, what if I bought it and then I wanted to sell it to you, Amber, for okay. a discounted price or whatever because you still have time to redeem it, you just can't go and buy that coupon anymore. So it's like a second market for coupon sites, which I think some people go too much coupon in, <laughs> but I have so many friends that have gone coupon crazy that I know this will appeal to certain people. Yeah, and I have this problem with buying these deals where I don't redeem them. This happens to me all the time. I just uh, got a deal uh, a few months ago and I just forgot to redeem it within the required amount of time. And uh, it really frustrates me. So something like this is a great way to keep track of all of the deals that you buy. Um, and, and Sarah, I just want to say one thing about uh, daily deals. My friend just told me about this service called uh, groupdudes.com. <laughs> and it's a place, it's daily deals for dudes. Because they're basically like, you know what? We You don't always need a deal for a spa or to get, you know, a manicure or a facial. These are deals for dudes. And these are things like, you know, flying lessons and, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, adventures, taking like bikes out, mountain bikes out and all this fun stuff that's very, very male oriented. So it's kind of a, a funny uh, spin off to the big trend in group, group buying. dudes. I love yeah. it. That's hysterical. So I know. I, it's really funny. That's <laughs> Taekwondo. That's the special it's real on tough. They're like today. tough daily, daily deals. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Well, we, and, and you know that's true. I've definitely had people say all these group uh, groupons and 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 daily deal sites and and flash sales. They're really women oriented, and that's of course not true all the time. That's a generalization, but there is something to be said about the people that are being marketed to. And maybe you, you like the whole idea of the group deal site, but yeah, you're not going to get a facial. You don't care about those shoes that are on sale. You certainly don't care about framing anything. That was the latest daily deal that I bought off of Living Social. It actually was off of Amazon, but it was a Living Social um, to start with. But yeah, group dudes. Cool. So you guys have a few more um, options if you're a crazy coupon collector. We have group dudes. And then, of course, citypockets.com um, that allows you to, to sort of accumulate and sell on the City Pockets marketplace as well. Um, finally, our last email of the week, got a lot of emails this week, so thanks for that. Jake wrote, I have a question in light of the Starbucks pick of the week coming to apps thing. Any idea how apps get picked? I'd love to get my app picked down the road. So Jake has made an app and I had no idea what Jake was talking about. <laughs> and then I, I have no idea. Was that? I thought it was for iPad Today or something. I had no idea what he was talking about. I didn't either. And I was like, Starbucks, what app store? What are they talking about? Anyway, it turns out that Starbucks, if you go to Starbucks, so this is this is mostly for people who are regular Starbucks um, visitors. By the counter, you'll have, you know, they'll have these little cards that'll have, oh, I don't know, a free song of the week type thing. And you know, Starbucks to, uh, makes um, a pretty penny selling their Starbucks CD collections and things like that. So they're trying to get the word out about new music and discovery and that sort of thing. Um, well, it turns out that now they're going to be rotating in apps of the week or, or uh, regular apps. I don't know if it's going to be exactly one week, but that's going to be part of their offerings because people in the past have said, you know, free music is fine, but it's like, who's really going to go through the trouble of regularly downloading one song from an artist that they may or may not like? Obviously, the point is, if you do like the song, then maybe you'll buy the album and Starbucks can get some sort of referral money, but that only works for, I guess... Uh, real audiophiles or somebody who maybe spent a lot of time in the store and was like, I love the song, so I definitely want to uh, try it out. But their current offering right now at the, the Starbucks Pick of the Week is uh, the paid version of Shazam, which is a great app. Um, I don't have the paid version because I like the app Shazam. It's that sort of music discovery so that you can run it when you're listening to a song and it'll... it'll um, 
collect the data of, of what it hears and tell you what the song is if you don't know who the artist and song is. But the paid version, I think it's called Shazam Encore, has a lot more features. And that's something that's like, you want to give that to me for free, Starbucks? Great. I'm happy to take it. So I think that this will actually appeal to a lot of people. Uh, I'm just not, especially people who go to Starbucks regularly and you know who you are, I'm just not sure how Jake would go about trying to get on their radar. I, 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 I don't know, maybe tweet at the Starbucks app? Um, well, uh, Sarah, you did say, include a link in the spreadsheet and uh, it links to Starbucks website where they talk about this. And it looks like there is someone just from me scanning through, there is someone from Starbucks or someone who's managing the comments who has replied to people. So I would say maybe oh, there if you go. to post there, Perfect. Um, you can, you know, try to get an answer. Although someone has posted a similar question and didn't get an answer yet. But, um, you know, maybe if you go in a few times and kind of, I don't want to say harass because that is not the right word. Um, <laughs> but uh, if you bug them in a gentle way. Uh, Be persistent. Yeah, persistent. Eventually, you might get an answer to that. Yeah. So, Jake, yeah, definitely. I, I hope that you get featured by Starbucks. And I think this is a really good idea. Um, more than ever, people are interested in trying out apps. And, of course, if if uh, Starbucks gets a bunch of people to um, start using Shazam, then Shazam, the people at Shazam are like, oh, we've got all these new people, and maybe we'll start developing certain features that now they're asking for that we never really thought of. So kind of helps the whole ecosystem. Before we go on to our rad or fad segment, just want to mention, uh, hearing from you is just the best part of the show. It's a social show. Amber and I want to be as interactive as possible, so we try to give you as many ways to get a hold of us as you can shake a stick at. The social hour at twit.tv is our email address. Our voicemail is 2626social. Don't be shy. Call us up. Leave us a voicemail. Try to make it 30 seconds or less. And of course, if you record a video, question, comment, a tip, anything, again, 30 seconds or less is kind of the sweet spot so that we can we can um, uh, include it in the show um, and kind of keep our flow going. That would be great. Upload it anywhere you like. Send us the link for where your video lives. And when you uh, email it to us, the link, if you include video in the subject line, it'll help it not get lost. Um, so we make sure that you didn't make a nice video for us and, and, and it got lost in the shuffle. Really appreciate all of your feedback. It's always really fun to go through everything and uh, talk about the stuff that you guys want to talk about. And before we get to Amber's Rad or Fat, and this is going to be a good one, want to quickly thank Netflix. They are our second sponsor on the Social Hour today. And I mean... Netflix is, uh, we love when Netflix is one of our sponsors because I can't get enough of Netflix. I use Netflix every single day of my life. And that's actually true. I mean, unless I'm out of town, specifically trying to get away from my own living room, <laughs> I'm using Netflix because it's the best way to watch movies or TV shows in many ways. Um, I, my, the iPad app is actually the way that I've been using Netflix more regularly because I take it to the gym with me. But you can get Netflix through your Apple TV or your Roku or your Xbox 360, directly through your television, if your television has Netflix widgets. I mean, the list goes on. It is really easy to use a Netflix account um, with a variety of, of boxes and gadgets that you might already just have laying around that you haven't thought of. If you already knew, use Netflix, you know how it works. There's an instant streaming queue. Stuff is being added to it every day that has a variety of old classics, new releases, stuff that's good for kids, dramas, horror movies, TV shows, TV series. Um, TV series that maybe you, you, know, you think, oh gosh, they're going into their fourth season. It's... What do I do? I want to be part of this TV show. Well, check Netflix. Maybe you can get caught up um, and then you can start watching uh, once a week with the rest of your friends and, and feel like you're up on everything. If you've never seen the show Glee, for example, maybe you can go to Netflix and start watching some Glee. I actually haven't. I, I am not a Glee person, but I know that it's beloved um, to the nth degree by so many people. It's like, what am I waiting for? I can just start watching it. Uh, it's multi-subscription. So, I mean, you can consume as much content via Netflix as you can, you know, in your waking hours. Of course, you can still do the DVD service. That's what Netflix started out as, where uh, you um, propagate your queue at Netflix's website with your account. You can reorder stuff if you decide... You know, I really don't want to watch Gone with the Wind next. I'm just not going to be in the mood for that. Well, drag it to the bottom of your queue and put something else at the top, and that'll be the next DVD you get. Of course, the instant streaming queue is is um it's the it's the best way to say I I'm in the mood to watch something right this second. I want it streaming, and then you're streaming it right away. Netflix.com/slash/twit is the uh, is the URL to use if you'd like. 
30 free days of Netflix content. Um, everything's on the table. Anything that Netflix offers, you can watch for free for 30 days. And if you're already a member, you know how it works. But I bet you can think of somebody who's never used it before. And you can get them on board because they've got their 30 free days uh, where they can go nuts and watch a bunch of movies and TV shows and then say, this is great. Why didn't I sign up for Netflix before? Netflix.com slash twit. And we thank them so much for sponsoring this episode of The Social Hour. And without further ado, Amber, what is rad yes. and what is fad? Oh, Sarah, another week of pressure. Uh, I uh, scoured the internet. This is uh, the segment that takes me the longest out of all of the places I need to fill out in our uh, lovely spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, I think I found a winner. Uh, this is something called the Talk O Clock. Now, it's a social media alarm clock. Um, now, I want you to think back to the days of uh, the service uh, Chat Roulette and how that became all the craze for a while. This is a little bit like that in the sense that uh, what you do is you sign up for Talk O'Clock and then you integrate it with your social media account like Facebook, for example. Mm -hmm. And then when you want to wake up at eight o'clock in the morning, there'll be a random person from Facebook or a social site who will call you I know to slow down here. They'll call you at home on your phone because you've uh, given the service your phone number, although that's not shown to the person who's calling you. And so random people can wake you up as your alarm clock. Wait, okay. So... Let me make sure I'm understanding this correctly. So I sign up with my Facebook account. Um, and by the way, it's, you still need invite codes, I guess, because I tried to connect via Facebook and it said, oh, we'll send you, a, you know, an, an invite code as soon as possible because they're still in beta. But okay, so I connect with Facebook. How would you be contacted by Taco Clock to call me at 7.30 a.m. when I need to wake up? Yeah, so it must be some type of messaging that happens between yeah. um, the service and you that's kind of hidden. So, um, for example, if you wanted to be woken up at 7.30, I would receive a message. Or I would be able to see, actually, I think it's a list of people who have certain wake-up times, and I can click on one of them and say, hey, I'd like to wake this person up. Um, and then I'll be sent a reminder, you know, 10 minutes before I'm supposed to call them, and then I call them. Um, but, uh, the, again, the phone number is kind of hidden. I haven't been able to test this out. Um, the apps are currently in the App Store, uh, both on Android Android and uh, iTunes, and they're not quite approved yet. Um, although I have talked to the founders who are based in Siberia. I sent them an email this morning and I said, is this a joke? I mean, I thought, you know, this is just so strange. Um, but I'm sure that people are who are interested in it. And they assured me it isn't a joke. They gave me some uh, invite codes, uh, asked me to give it a try. So um, I'm going to have to give it a whirl this week and uh, report back next week. Um, although I'm a little freaked out. I'm not going to lie, Sarah. Well, you're not the only one. So we're looking at a little bit of an instructional video that Taco Clock has on their website to just help us understand how this works a little bit better. So there's confirmation codes involved and, you know, you have to make sure that the privacy policy makes sense to you. And then you can decide if you want to wake somebody up or be woken up type of a thing. But I'm looking at our chat room and I think there are a lot of people saying this is super creepy or... <laughs> Could I choose which friend to woke me up? <laughs> you know, I have certain a, friends a who would abuse female. this. Yeah, the only thing you choose right now is a male or female. But what if you could customize it so much that you could choose a female or a male at a certain age, you know, someone who only liked Glee. I mean, you can get very specific with interests that people have shared on sites like Facebook. I mean, it's really weird because it's almost like wake up dating, if I can say that. I see. OK, I I'll be honest. I would love to wake somebody up. And by the way, somebody in, in chat, Metro the Dog says, are you saying taco clock? Like, you know, Mexican <laughs> food? It's T-A-L-K-O clock.com. So I understand the confusion there. I would love to wake somebody up. I think that sounds like great fun. I don't know that I would want anyone else to wake me up though because we're all kind of particular about how we start our day off in the morning. And some of us are a little bit grouchier than others. And if somebody screamed a profanity at me or something via Taco Clock, I might be very sorry that I tried it out at all. Yeah, I know. I don't even know what to say. I know there's going to be some stories once this becomes available to people uh, on a large scale. I'm sure there'll be stories of people, you know, meeting and talking for a long time. Maybe it's great for people who are kind of lonely. Uh, I don't know, Sarah. It's Ooh, an also, interesting one. Also a good question 
uh, from our chat room. What if no one calls? The fear, obviously, being then you'll never wake up. No, I be- they'll call you. Yeah. So they've got they've got a backup. <laughs> they have an alarm backup inside the app. That would be the worst app ever. <laughs> it's like some strange person that you might be loosely connected to on a social network will call you at seven, and then no one does, and then you miss your your meeting and then you don't get the job that you wanted. Uh, so yeah, they, they've, they've thought about that in advance. I think this is rad. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely has a creepy factor um, or at least a silly factor. It's probably a better way to describe how this feels to me. And the chat roulette distinction, I think is, it makes a lot of sense because like you never really know what you're gonna get. But hey, if you, if you think variety is the spice of life, there's probably no better way um, that at least to wake up never knowing how the day is going to start than with something like Taco Clock. I like it. Maybe you'll be excited to wake up too because you'll be thinking, oh my gosh, I know in the morning, you know, some stranger is going to call me and wake me up. But I always wonder, you know, what's the conversation going to be like at that point? I, I think it's fun and interesting. So um, like I said, I have a couple of invites that I need to use. I am going to try it because I just want to learn more about it. So I'll be able to report back and uh, let everybody know how it worked. But if anyone else has an experience with it and wants to try it, I would love to, and I know Sarah would agree, just kind of share your stories next week on the show and uh, see if you met some interesting, strange, or fascinating people uh, with this new social alarm clock. Absolutely. Yes. Let us know. Uh, tell, tell, tell us your crazy stories about Taco Clock once, once uh, you're up and running um, with the app. That's great fun. That's good stuff. Uh, so goodie. Amber, you haven't said, rad or fad, I know that you're going to take the next week and yes. test it out a little bit more, but first impression... I think it's kind of rad at my first impression. However, I need to test it out and see what the experience is like when someone actually calls me because maybe it'll be so freaky, I'll just hang up on them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so uh, who knows? I mean, it'll be interesting, Sarah. I will say that, but um, I'll stick with rad for now um, and uh, I'll let you know next week. Okay, cool. It's funny. Somebody had um, written me, I don't know if they emailed or tweeted or I don't remember, but they said, have you and Amber ever disagreed on what's rad or fad? And I, I think we haven't. I think we've always agreed on pretty much everything. And that's not because we've decided ahead of time that we have to agree. I guess we just have a lot of the same opinions when it comes to this stuff. Yeah, exactly. I think we kind of, yeah, we share the same sort of uh, social sensibility, if I can call it that, Sarah. It's a nice way to say interest. <laughs> exactly. Social sensibility. Uh, that's what we have in common, among other things. So we're at the end of our show, Amber. That's that's pretty much it. We've uh, we've covered a lot of stuff. Again, um, if you've missed anything, something went by, we talked about something a little bit too quickly, don't worry because we'll add everything into our show notes section, twit.tv slash TSH. Um, and remember, if you can't watch the show live... You can always subscribe to our show via iTunes, straight off our website. I mean, we make it really easy for you to consume our content however you want to, whether you, you want to watch it live or you want to watch it when you're making dinner on Tuesdays or anything. Um, as long as you're watching or listening, we have audio feeds as well. Uh, we are happy. And Amber, I, I have a, uh, a video to play us out since it worked so well last week. Um, Love it. Which uh, many of you have probably already seen, but it does involve Muppets. So I think that it works for us. And it's, I would call it a social video because it has over 2 million views on YouTube already after just a few days. And I think this is from Nicole Bailey who sent us the link. So thank you for that. Thank you, Nicole. All right, Amber, uh, I will see you. We're we're actually going to shoot a show uh, this Friday. Oh yeah, that's right. Yep. I'll Uh, see you Friday. Because uh, the week from today, uh, it is Labor Day in the U.S. and the Twit studio will be closed. So Amber and I will shoot a show at 12.30 p.m. Pacific to 3.30 p.m. Eastern on Friday. So join us if you can. Um, Otherwise, of course, just uh, hit our feeds. And uh, we'll see you later in the week. All right. Thanks, Sarah. Bye, Amber. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.